Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, a couple quick things to go over. Um, I've been working on the macro triggers this week, uh, as well as implementing a way for device-specific triggers, uh, which is important because uh, right now, so far, all the triggers that I've been designing the application to use have been global, uh, meaning like system-wide events or application-wide events. Uh, but now, uh, starting to get into the macro builder, I need to also develop it so it recognizes uh, more localized triggers, uh, meaning that the triggers might come from a specific device where multiple devices exist. Uh, so that's involved some new classes and stuff like that and methods, uh, as well as implementing a way to uh, do late device arrival binding. Um, meaning that the trigger and the macro can be built and either serialized or deserialized without the device that it's referencing existing yet. Uh, so if you start the application but you haven't actually plugged the controller in yet, um, that doesn't break the macro because it's looking for a controller that doesn't exist. It'll simply just wait for it to show up. So that's an important thing to get right. Um, that's, that's an issue that Input Mapper uh, the framework that I had for the ODIF and uh, IM 2.0 had issues. Um, it had a hard time late hooking these devices, uh, but I've been doing a lot better uh, job with the framework for this input mapper where uh, the capability for me to do that's existed since the beginning, um, mainly because of the way I've been working with already uh, handling the device to device binding and the mapping and the control mapping and all that stuff is already required uh, it, at some level. Uh, this just requires a little bit more. So um, I got that, I think, pretty much working. I don't have a way to test it yet until I start throwing together a UI for the macro builder. Uh, right now, I'm just uh, building a lot of the framework that it's going to reference. Um, so I'll probably start working on a makeshift UI this week. Uh, it won't look pretty, but it should be able uh, to give you guys enough control where you can get in there and start tinkering with it and uh, report any bugs and you know give me any suggestions or feedback. Um, in the future I will break it out into a more uh, full-fledged UI that you know has some pretty cool features and all that stuff in it but right now it's going to be pretty much just adding stuff by drop down box kind of like how the command uh, UI looks right now you're just adding it through a couple drop down boxes. Uh, so that's about it. Um, that's where the core of my focus is on this week, uh, as well as a few small cleanup tasks and all that in the code. Uh, a couple small bug fixes I have, uh, one of which where a, a bad date value being returned from our site was keeping some people from logging in on 1.7. Um, I have that fixed. I don't know if I've pushed that patch yet. If not, I'll get that out this morning. Uh, as well as a couple small UI tweaks to tide things over until I really dive into the UI. Uh, but that's about it. Um, I want to remind you guys, uh, if you plan on doing any Amazon shopping uh, in the near future, make sure to make use of the link in the description below. Um, that helps us out generating revenue without you guys having to do anything. Uh, and it's becoming ever more important as the, uh, you know, the DS4... Uh, the DS4 interest is kind of starting to lull now. Uh, people are just either already set in the application they want to use, or uh, there's not as many people running out to purchase DualShock 4s right now. So um, it's important to you know kind of keep the project going through whatever revenue streams we can. Uh, so Amazon, uh, that link is good. Make use of it. Uh, that's about it, guys. Have a good one. I will see you next week.